name is Bishop Larry Jordan Sr. And welcome to Moving People in the Right Direction. The Word of God moves us in the right direction and it's for you to comprehend and understand the direction that the Lord is giving us. It has been on my heart to make sure that we understand planting seed for spiritual growth. Uh, yesterday, we were up at the building, and every time I walk on that ground, boy, I say, mm, such freedom, such liberty on the grounds of that church. The presence of God is there. So you have to be spiritual uh, to feel the, the peace, the calm, the serenity of the Holy Spirit on that property. And all I see is, is great things manifesting for the perfect will of God. The DMV and the nation has yet to really hear who we are, but they will. The Believer's Worship Center, the name Believer's Worship Center will be a great name, a functioning name, a name that people will come to know that is sound because we preach sound doctrine. Don't look at what you see today. We put our feet on that holy ground in that church back in 2012 and we proclaim that building to the Lord. And through all the catastrophic things that we've experienced, still Jesus is there. So I'm going to go to <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 55 and I'm going to start at verse number 10. It says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now my heart and my soul and my body is wrapped around this scripture. Why? Because I know that God does give seed to the soul, whether it's a farmer or whether it's a preacher or whether it's just a member. They have the word of God within them and they are to plant seed. The word seed has been watered down. And it has been watered down because people think today where these slogans and these little cliches go out where people think seed is money. And last week I had put on the screen what seed is. Seed is what God said it is. So we look forward to seeing us as a ministry so see God's word during this perilous times. We're in perilous times. I'm going to say that again. We are in perilous times. Time is calculating. The world is coming to an end. The church has to plant seed in the souls of people. So we cannot dilute, or should I say, agree with the word seed to be expressed as money. We have to use the word in terms of what God said it would do. If a farmer is going to plant corn, and if we're going to plant a peach tree or, or a mustard seed tree, I, I said that, uh, I had faith as a grain of a mustard seed and because I believe with that mustard seed faith I grew into a tree. I'm strong. The tree now has wisdom, it has knowledge, it has understanding, it has the fruit of the spirit. The tree has the gifts of the spirit. The tree knows how to bring forth ministry and rightly divide the word. The same with some of you all. 
that grain of a mustard seed that Jesus planted in your infancy of Christianity has caused you to grow into a tree. So when a farmer plants a seed, the agriculture of it brings forth a harvest. Winter, spring, summer, fall are the seasons that we read about in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 through 22 about seed time harvest. That has to be planted in our heart that God meant what he said that that harvest will come to pass through those four seasons. I believe that. I believe that what God said will bring things to pass. The word of God is the seed. The scripture says in Luke chapter 8 verse number 11. And then we read where Jesus Christ is the seed that came through the lineage of Abraham and to the generation of David. Jesus comes out of the, the tribe of Judah and now he's called a king because David was a king, a conquering king, a mighty king. So now Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and he's come to bring salvation to mankind. And now we're the heirs of kingdom of heaven because Jesus is the seed, the word of God that God the Father planted in the earth that will bring forth salvation and that will bring forth life to mankind. So now he plants that word in us. And now we sow seed that people will be saved. Don't go to hell or go enter into the kingdom of heaven. So I want you to listen to me on this. Understand seed time harvest. Understand it according to what God said seed would do. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 through 22. Understand sowing and reaping. Understand that. What God said about sowing and reaping. Sowing Seed, sowing your time, sowing your life, sowing the word of God, also sowing our tithes and our offerings. But sowing has a different meaning from the word seed. Okay, understand how to rightly divide the word of God because we're in a time now where People must know about the kingdom of heaven. When you hear my commentary concerning the times that we're in, you'll see why God has it on my heart to preach and to minister about the significance of the word seed. Because the word of God is powerful. The Bible says it's more sharper than any two-edged sword. And it just what, cuts through soul and spirit. It rightly divides what we need to come out of us so that we will stay alive and know how to walk in the things of the Lord. It's important that we walk in the spirit and fulfill the things of the kingdom and not walk in the flesh and fulfill the things of the world. So our goal is to strengthen Christians and not weaken them with false doctrine. So in this church, we plant seed and hopefully on next week I have the opportunity to talk about the four people that come to church but don't always take sowing seed that they will grow. So we want people to grow and listen to me on this. I'm believing God that he will send the Christian or the sinner, first the sinner that truly have opened up their heart to God to be converted, to want to live righteous and holy before him. God says that he will add to the church daily those that will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the world. So preaching the word of God and sowing seed is even important for membership because we want your words to have life and to bring the abundance of salvation to people that need Christ. Well, I look at this also, that 
we want to spend the right time to also understand how to develop our minds and our hearts to come to the conclusion always that it's important that our heart is turned towards the Christian that want to grow spiritually. So now you have to really look at times as to how you socialize with your spirit with people and how people socialize in their spirit with you. You have to look at what's bringing you down and what's causing you uh, uh, not to be as anointed as you once were. The Holy Spirit is the anointing of God. He lives within us. And I trust him to bring forth power when we so see the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is an important scripture to me to bring back to you, to sow it in your spirit so that we will balance ourselves and how the devil attacks. I'm balanced in how he attacks. I, I know his ways, his, his tricks, yeah. which is his wiles. You know, we, we, we should be on to his tricks now. Yeah. 11 and 3, 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear lest somehow the serpent deceive Eve by his craftiness, so your mind may be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. Now, he got her, but is he going to get you? How much of seed sown in God's word have you obtained to walk in the knowledge of God that Satan cannot trick you? How much have you grown to the point that he cannot trick you? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse number 22 it says since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit the Holy Spirit in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever now we see there that the word seed is being associated with the word, but the word is incorruptible. So every time we hear the word of God, it deals with corruption. So there's a safety net because we know as human beings, when we're not always trying to fulfill our purpose of walking in the spirit, at times we need the incorruptible word to reposition us in Christ that he's satisfied with our walk, that he's satisfied with our spirit, that he's satisfied with our mind. I want God to be satisfied with my spirit and with my mind. It's important that my mind is clear. It's important that I know I personally know how to make my mind clear. It's important that I know how to reposition my heart. We fail. We make mistakes. Things happen in life. But we have to reposition ourselves. Why? Because the word of God is incorruptible. And when you're hearing seed being sown, it's, reposi it's repositioning your soul where you need to be. I love to hear the preaching and the teaching of God's word, especially in this time. <clears throat> I want you to listen to my commentary and I'll be right back. Let's hear what the Lord has to say about perilous times and sowing seed. The pandemic has brought death around the world. In America, we see and experience mass killings almost daily. So much hatred is expressed through racism, and now homosexuality is an accepted lifestyle. The culture welcomes the exchange of sexual identity and sexual orientation, and the government passes laws to grant this sinful lifestyle civil unions. The word informs us in Romans 1, 24 through 28, that God gave them 
those practicing homosexuality over to a debased mind because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. As a born-again Christian, we must see these days as wicked and immoral. We must prepare for the coming of the Lord. Do not sleep, but be wise. Do not fall asleep, but be wise and walk in the knowledge of the Lord, according to biblical prophecy as signs of warning. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 6 through 8, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, and we as Christians must walk circumspectly, not as fools, but be wise and understanding in accordance with Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. We are to redeem the time, which means we are to fulfill righteousness and bring forth the will of God because the days are evil. Therefore, understand why we must sow the seed, the word of God, according to Luke 8. And 11. As a church, we must preach sound doctrine in the presence of the Lord. The judgment of God is reforming his church, the body of Christ, to bring forth the power of the gospel and doctrine of Christ. As wickedness gets out of control in America and all man knows to do is to present evil, the church will sow the seed of God's word to win thousands of souls to Christ. Stay committed to the work of the ministry, for great is your reward in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Stay committed. Stay committed to the work of the ministry. Proverbs chapter 10, and I'm going to go right at it. Verse number 22. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, The blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Now, we've heard this scripture all uh, plenty of times in the body of Christ. And, you know, I want to bring you clarity to what that scripture means. Number one, the blessings of the Lord makes one rich. It's talking about spiritual richness to soul and spirit. Not money, spiritual richness. To be spiritual rich means you know how to comprehend the perfect will of God. You know how to walk in the safety of God by allowing the Holy Spirit to dictate the, the, the pace of your lifestyle. The Holy Spirit dictates the pace of my lifestyle. This is the reason why I don't go into certain areas and don't take my wife or allow her to go in certain areas simply because we're in the safety of the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but the safety of the Lord tells me in Ephesians, it is written that I am to wash my wife with the water of the word. I am to love her. Listen to this now. I am to love her like Jesus loves the church. So if Jesus loves the church, he knows how to speak to it. He knows how to corral it and to carouse it. He knows how to love it and to position the church. I'm thankful that the Lord knows how to position the church. So as a man of God, I'm supposed to know how to position my wife because I want the kingdom of heaven to always be around us and work through us to be safe. Mass killings. Now we're seeing people that are, you know, just reviling all in the streets where they are, you know, just fussing about abortion now. Now, now, now we're seeing something else that's rising up. Every month or every week, there's something rising up in this country to bring more hatred, more division, is getting out of control. All right, so we must know how to sow properly because people are going to need a church of refuge. And if people are going to need a church of refuge, then they need a place that they can come where they're going to hear the whole Bible how you take care of your family, how you take care of yourself, how you take care of the people of God and grow in the Holy Spirit knowing that the times are evil. Perilous times means that times are evil. 
but yet and still Christians still walk in the same mentality like they did a few years ago or like they did when they were growing up. You're not, so mo most Christians are not even paying attention to the perversion and the sexual immorality that has increased in this country. We we'll read about Sodom and Gomorrah, but do you believe what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah? So now we see homosexuality is a culture that our society has accepted. But as far as I'm concerned, the Christian has to be responsible to know how to deal with these outrageous sins that we consistently see and that is consistently confronting the church. The church will come under persecution. At some point, we're going to face really where our faith is in God. And you're going to have to make a decision now how you're going to grow and be full of the Holy Spirit, full of the presence of God, and a mind to know that everything is not expedient for you as a Christian today as it was yesterday. All right. So let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Because this is an important scripture to me also. Chapter 6, verse number 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words. I'm going to stop there for a minute. Because I consent as your pastor to wholesome words, I have friends in ministry that want to disconnect at times simply because of me telling the truth. And I'm going to go through some things about telling the truth. One of the biggest, and I wouldn't argue about this, but, but I ran into a, a pastor one time, and we got to talking. And as we were talking, he brought up calling those things that are not as though they were. I said, man, did you really, really read that chapter? Did you really read those verses? Because if I could, man, if I could call things that are not as though they were, I want you all to listen to me on this because people are stuck just like sowing seed. People are stuck and they get agitated when you speak Bible to them, not being deceived by the devil, being pushed from the simplicity of the truth. I refuse to be pushed from the simplicity of the truth. I don't care how much a person is seen in the body of Christ as this statue, I don't care how much money they have, how many members they have, that doesn't mean anything. If they're not preaching the truth, then I can't stand with it. I put up with it, but I'm not standing with it. We have to understand that. Okay, so God has commissioned me to stick to the simplicity of the truth in Christ Jesus. And he has he has moved me to stand firm and to be committed that simplicity is of him. Not confusion, simplicity is of him. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 4. When I read this, I just want to see it's Romans 4 and 17. It says, and now notice now, 17 starts out with this, as it is written. How dumb can you get that you don't pay attention to the word as it is written? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now, okay, it's, it's sure, this, this is, has been made into a doctrine now. Because, you know, people say, well, I got the God kind of faith. I can call those things that are not as though they were. And you all heard me preach on this before. But I'm doing this for a reason. Because I'm not the only one that comes into contact with people that think like this. So, yes, I put up with it as I told you. But then it's my opportunity to say, haven't you seen the simplicity of the scripture that it is God and it is not you? Have you read the history of this, that it is dealing with a 90-year-old woman and a 100-year-old man to bring a child into the earth? Do you know the reason why they're bringing Isaac into the earth? Bringing Isaac into the earth simply because now 
Jesus has to come into the earth. You hear me consistently saying this. God has to choose somebody. And I know that maybe some of you all may sit there, but God looks in the earth and he says, is there a church that I can trust even where they are right now in their poverty? Is there a church that I can trust that, we, that will stay committed to my word, that I will fulfill that church in my time because they're staying committed to the word of God that people will receive seed to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. God looks down and he's looking to see, are you looking for popularity or are you looking for me? Well, I'm looking for him. And looking for him means that I have to position myself to know how to be like him. I'm not saying that I want to be like Jesus just to be saying it. I'm saying I want to be like Jesus because I want his power and his authority to work through the word of God when I speak it. That change will come based upon what the word of God says. All right. So there's a word that I have been challenged on. So I don't care how you look at it, but this is the way I look at it. I sowed seed. I sowed seed to see if the seed, according to scripture, Matthews 13, 23, if it's going to fall on good ground. Pastor, are you good ground? Because the simplicity of the truth says God calls those things that are not as though they were. Not me. God calls those things. That is a simple truth. And the scripture says it is written that God did that. Okay, so we're going to look at something here. We're going to validate that planting seed is for spiritual growth, not money to enhance you. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. Let me read that in its entirety. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to, consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, the Bible says he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments. And that's something that I refuse to go into. I'm not going to argue with somebody when I know the truth is. I'm going to move on. I put up with it. That's where you are. I'm moving on. Verse number four, he is proud knowing nothing, is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words which come envy and strife and revilings and evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of, and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means. There it is right there. Godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. Now, godliness with contentment, the Bible says, is great gain. All right. So there it is right there. God is looking for a people to bring wholesome words. And once you give the truth, you don't have to argue with the devil about it. You give the truth, and you say, okay, that's where you are. How's your mom doing? How's your dad doing? How are your sisters and brothers? You move on. Why? Because you already planted the seed. Let God do the rest. It's all about faith now. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. All right, so now let's develop our minds to understand what God is saying. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to read this verse 10 in its entirety, then I'll move on down. It says, now may he who supplies seed to the sow and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Verse number 11. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Okay, so I always encourage you to understand where I'm going to come from on this particular ver these particular two verses, you're going to have to read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 when it deals with giving. Because I really want you to understand how to give according 
to scripture. Not according to man. His ways that will weasel you here and there. But according to the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God. Okay, so let me reread the scripture. So you will understand it. Now may he, Jesus Christ, who supplies the word to the soul and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed, the seed, the seed. You have sown and increased the fruits of your righteousness. Now do you understand anything about fruit? Because money don't increase your fruit. Word of God does. All right, so the word of God increases righteousness. The word of God increases fruit. And fruit. So what the, what the scripture is implying here, that Jesus Christ gives seed to the sower. And what does he do? He supplies, he supplies the seed to the sower. And he gives bread for food. Now, I want to prove this. And Matthew's turning with me, chapter 6. The Lord is leading me to go there. Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat. Because God supplies food. He supplies bread to the soul. I'm sowing the word of God. I'm pastoring. I'm ministering to you. I'm sowing seed. God supplies food for me. Yes, he does. Does he supply food for you? Everybody that does the will of God, God takes care of. So he proves it here in Matthew chapter 6. This is the reason why I don't walk around trying to prove myself who I am. By things. The riches of God's glory is spirit. It's not natural. It's spirit. How powerful are you spiritually? How much of Christ is in you? How much have you developed in the spirit of the Lord to the point that everything that comes at you, you know how to deal with it? All right. So the scripture goes on to say this. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is life. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? It says in verse number 26, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap or gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more than they? Okay, so I don't care how I'm attacked, sowing seed, you're not going to stop me from getting bread. So, again, I put up with it, but I'm not worrying about it. Because I know God is going to put food on the table. I know he's going to put food on the table. Now, this scripture has been taken out of context. And simply because we look at the, the, the statue or the size of a ministry. And because these people are on television, they must be right. I have even questioned some commentaries of scholars. Don't you know there are scholars that write the Bible, that drink and that cuss and that party and, and that go out with women and do all kinds of things, but yet and still they give their commentary on Scripture? Do you know that? You have a lot of people that give commentaries on Scripture that don't even truly and honestly serve the Lord from the heart, but yet and still we would think their word is true. So this is the reason why the Lord talks about revelation knowledge. He has to give you your truth. Your truth is him. He has to put that in you. Okay, so let's continue. It says, while you are enriched in everything for all liberality. Wow. For all liberality. Listen to this. Fruits of your righteousness will enrich you. We're going to look at the word enrich. Will enrich you to improve, to be better, enhance you, perfect you, refine you. 
That's what happens when we are enriched with the Spirit of the Lord. As a believer, you are prepared for everything with all liberality. Why? Because you have been enriched by the Word of God to be liberated. When you are, should I say, enriched to understand that the Holy Spirit brings liberty, he brings liberty. The Holy Spirit brings liberty. When he gives you liberty, you won't stop when God says go. You will move forward when God says go. All right, so let me, re let me, let, let me revisit this. Enrichment, it means to improve. Have you improved your faith? Have you improved your study habits? Have you improved your spirit? The most important thing, have you improved your spirit to be better? Have you enhanced your life to, re to perfect and to refine the way that you think and the way that you walk? You still have people sometimes, they are so busy into doing things that they never fulfill their purpose in Christ. I want you to fulfill your purpose in Christ. Are you led to do this? Have you been commissioned to do this? Is God telling you to do this? God told Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 to go to the churches of Macedonia, to the church of Corinth who was being disobedient at the time, that he needed to get some financial help for the church that is in Jerusalem if you follow the scriptures. So as we see this, man has taken this to the point where he's saying this seed is money. But Paul is saying, no, the knowledge and the wisdom of God that I preach from his word has caused these people to come together to give, to supply the church that is in Jerusalem because they need financial help. So now we must improve the way that we think. We are enriched to improve the way that we think. We are enriched to be better in the way that we live unto Christ. We are enriched to perfect and to refine ourselves as a believer because we have to prepare this offering for those that are in need. See, again, here we go again, where there are people that just won't take seed for what it is. Seed improves, seed enhances, seed revives. Man, I don't know how many times I've been dead and God revived me. I'm, I'm talking about spiritually. Thank God that he never goes back on his word. He made it clear. He says, my word will be forever with you. I would, is that a promise? I would never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't it a promise? I would love you all the way to the end. And he says, he who endures to the end will receive the promises of God. All right, so let's look at this real quick. Let's verify the scripture. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to have to get ready to tie this in. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's see what 4 and 8 says, because we're talking about enrichment, right? Okay, so here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, verse 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace, key word, of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift. Now we're going to see how Paul is using his gift as an apostle to bring the administration to get others involved. See in ministry you have to get others involved when it comes to dealing with money. Because when you have to supply the need there has to be skilled mentality to deal with that. There has to be patience to deal with that. God has to develop the, the, the money factor in the ministry because he wants to see the conclusion of the church come into prominence. Now I know this to be a fact. Everybody is not always going to agree with my thinking. 
I know that. God knows that. That's why he tells me to trust in him. But through all the time that I have been in ministry, I have not lacked eating bread. Through all the time in ministry, this church, those of you that, has, that says, I am going to endure this to the end, God has taken care of you. Nothing has fallen off. God has totally taken care of you. Why? Because of the work of the ministry. We're going to see, we're going to see how God just moves forward. And I'm going to come back to uh, next week. I'm going to have to come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. But let me finish reading this. Verse number 8. Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. Now I want to go back to, I just proved about what the word enrichment does. If you read that, you will see why you are enriched. Now, let's go to verse number 12, and I'm going to conclude here and come back on next week. Paul says, for the administration of this service, the administration of this service, how can you administratively bring anything to pass unless you serve people? Okay, so now he's talking about the administration of his gift. His gift of what? Apostleship. Because now the authority of his apostleship is getting involved with other churches. This is what we need to do to help our church at Jerusalem. So he's talking about the administration of his service. The administration of my service is to lead this church with the gospel, with my time, and with the skills that God has given me. All right, so administratively, God has given me that gift. He has given me the gift of administration as a pastor to understand how to corporately build a ministry with people to trust not only in him, but in me. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to have a little division here and, and, a, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of anxiety over here. We're going to see that happen. We're going to see it happen. But administration knows how to take care of that. This is the reason why we have to communicate. Paul communicated to Titus. Paul communicated to the brother that they didn't mention his name in the Bible where they were going to take that offering and they were, they were trusted with that offering, but they were trusted with that offering because of the administration of the apostle's gift. And the apostle put all of that together financially because he was involved with James, the brother of Jesus Christ, with the church of Jerusalem. So they're in communication. This is what we need. I don't know what they needed, but we need money to handle this. And we, we, we need you to, 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 to get us some aid, to get us some help. So here's Paul now. I'm going to the churches of Macedonia. I'm going to the Corinthians. I'm going to Thessalonica. I'm going to these churches. I'm going to pull them together, and we're going to get this money. And I just ran out of time. I'll be back on next week. We're moving people in the right direction. God bless you. And we appreciate your continued support. If you would like to make a donation or pay your tithes and offering, please go to tbwc.org slash give. We have begun our Moving People in the Right Direction pledge campaign, and $12 is all it takes to help us to purchase and complete the construction of our building. Your donation can be made at tbwc.org. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. online or on Facebook. It is our pleasure to introduce our new online Christian education program, the Believer's Bible Institute. Registration is now open for individuals interested in furthering their knowledge of the Word of God. Please visit bbitbwc.com for more information and to view our current course offerings. Jesus said, Come unto me, join us for prayer every Friday at 7 p.m. You can submit a prayer request by emailing us at prayer at tbwc.com.
www.ghostbusinessfoundation.org.